In this video, we're going to examine how carbon can form both double and triple bonds in addition to four single bonds. The explanation for which begins exactly the same way as before by taking the paired electron from the 2s subshell and moving it to the unoccupied p orbital in the 2p subshell. However, this is where the hybridization occurs differently. So here, we can see, at, just as before, carbon has four unpaired electrons, but instead when we make double bonds, we're going to take the orbital from the 2s subshell and only two of the 2p orbitals and hybridize them together, which would look like this. So remember that the 1s subshell are the core electrons, so no hybridization occurs here, but when we make our hybrid orbitals, we're going to join the 2s subshell with two of the 2p orbitals here, meaning that we have three orbitals, each with an unpaired electron like this, and because the orbitals only involve the 2s subshell and two of the 2p orbitals, these are what we call sp2 hybrid orbitals rather than sp3 orbitals. Now, the last remaining p orbital here exists as a 2p orbital that is unhybridized with a single unpaired electron. So the result of this hybridization is that we have one remaining 2p orbital that is left unhybridized, and this, as we'll see, is actually used to make the double bond. So if we want to examine how bonding occurs, we can take a look at the structure of C2H4, which has two carbons joined with a double bond and carbons single bonded to two hydrogens each like this. Now the carbon to hydrogen bonds are formed using sigma bonds exactly as we've seen before, where each of these orbitals on the carbon is one of the three sp2 hybrid orbitals that we've seen here. So each of these contains one unpaired electron which can pair with the unpaired electron either from hydrogen in the case of carbon to hydrogen bonds or with the unpaired electron in the, in the carbon over here using its unpaired electron from an sp2 hybrid orbital here. And each of these makes a single bond either carbon to carbon here or carbon to hydrogen here. The double bond is formed differently because the double bond relies on the unpaired electrons that occur in the unhybridized p orbital. And basically what happens is that these unhybridized p orbitals fold over and overlap with each other, allowing their unpaired electrons to pair together. Now because these two orbitals are unhybridized, these are not sigma bonds and are instead what we call pi bonds represented by the Greek letter pi here. Triple bonds similarly form in a manner that is more similar to double bonds. So again, we start by moving this paired electron to the unoccupied p orbital here, but in triple bonds, the 2s subshell is involved in hybridization and only one of the 2p orbitals is going to be hybridized. So if we draw our four unpaired electrons like this, now we're going to hybridize the 2s subshell with only one of the 2p subshells, which we can do like this. Now, because we've combined the 2s subshell and only one of the p orbitals from the 2p subshell, these are what we call sp hybrid orbitals and the two remaining unhybridized 2p orbitals exist separately here. And of course, the 1s subshell is not involved in this hybridization at all, so it is unaffected by this process. So doing this, we can see that carbon still has four unpaired electrons like this, but two of the p orbitals remain unhybridized, and the, S, the 2s subshell has only hybridized with one of the p orbitals that we see, and this affects the bonding fairly significantly. So sigma bonds still form in exactly the same way. Uh, this sigma bond is formed by one of the sp hybrid orbital electrons pairing with hydrogen's 1s 
electron here. And when these two pair, this gives us a, uh, let's write the bond in the right orientation, gives us a hydrogen to carbon bond here. And the second sp hybridized electron here pairs with the sp hybridized electron on this other carbon atom here and that gives us our second sigma bond which is a single carbon to carbon bond however carbons double bond and triple bond form using the unhybridized p orbitals that we see here so the two remaining sorry about that the two remaining p orbitals can overlap in exactly the same way that we saw with double bonds so we have one of the unpaired electrons from an unhybridized p orbital here and then the other one on the adjacent carbon these can fold over and pair together in order to give us a double bond and if the second unhybridized p orbitals over here each with an unpaired electron fold over themselves here we can get a second pi bond forming here in order to give us the carbon carbon triple bond so as we can see in order to get a triple bond we need two unhybridized p orbitals to fold over on themselves in order to give us a double bond and then a triple bond and the single bonds that form are each from the sp hybridized orbitals either forming a bond between carbon and hydrogen or a single bond between carbon and the next carbon over here in the next video we're going to take a look at how hybridization can be used to explain expanded valence shells and how hybridization can allow elements to form more than four single bonds.